What's up, VC? Oh, I'm back again already, but kind of wanted to make a vinyl tag for this year because I've never done one, and I like the idea of it, and I like watching these videos because I like showing people things that they're prideful in and finding new records that I don't know about, too, a lot of the time because sometimes people's favorite records I've never heard of. So I always think it's pretty fun. Uh, I'm doing Mazzy's vinyl tag because... It's the one, I don't know, that I saw the questions to. And I was like, I got albums for pretty much all of these. I think I've got albums for all but one. And it might be a surprising one, actually. But uh, let's start with the first question. Favorite album that I bought this year? And it's got to be Grant Green Alive on Blue Note. A lot. Some of these I've shown in other videos, but this is by far my favorite one I've gotten this year. I spin it pretty regularly. I love the playing on this album by everybody. It's amazing. It's in my first first video. Go check that out if you want to hear me talk a little bit more about it. Um, next, the record I spent the most on this year, which was in my last video, uh, and that is Blue Train. It's a Liberty pressing, um, but really clean cover. I got this at a record show. I may be overspent on it, but I don't see this album hardly ever, so I had to have it. It's a classic. The next one I actually don't have, and that is an album by the first person I saw live, which I find surprising even myself. The first person I ever saw live was Alice Cooper, and I don't have any Alice Cooper, and I should. I know that, but I feel like he's an artist. You know, I go to the store with a limited amount of money, and I see his stuff all the time, so I never think to pick it up. And I should have it. I should have Billion Dollar Babies and Alice Cooper by Alice Cooper and all of them. Well, not all of them, but, you know, I like his early stuff a lot. But great concert. It was maybe when I was 14. I'm 25 now. But next is a record from a new artist. It did say brand new artist. I don't have anything by brand new artist, but this is a new artist. This is called Jungle by Jungle, self-titled. Uh, there's a label for you. Let's flip it over. This band is like a neo-soul electronic funk band. When I first heard this record, this is their very first record, blew me away. Was obsessed. Listened to it for a month and a half straight. Um, I just missed them in town recently. Uh, I was going to buy tickets like last minute, but I went to go look at it and turns out I was trying to buy tickets for that very night and the concert was already going on. Sucks for me, but really awesome record. Would highly recommend this to anyone looking for anything newer and a bit of all the genres. Next is an album in the shrink. This is Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits. Classic record, Two Eye Stereo. I've got the poster right here. Actually, I'll show you guys. Right there. That's Keith Richards. But classic album, has a sticker. Got this for a really good price. I have been looking for one with the poster for a long, long time. Finally got one. And I have the poster obviously framed and hanging up because I love it so much. Uh, number six, this is a concept album. I have also showed this one in another video. I went with something a little different this time, but I do have a couple concepts, but I went with Redheaded Stranger, uh, you know, with the sticker. Awesome. On that Columbia 360, amazing record. Um, I've talked about it in, I think my second video. So go check that one out if you want to hear me talk more about that one. Classic record, amazing. Gotta have it. Number seven is show a record you love but haven't given much love to recently. I went with, they call it the Red Album sometimes, Grand Funk by Grand Funk. Um, this is actually a German pressing on Capitol, that green with the purple. I absolutely love this record. It's so intense, goes so hard. Opens up with a song called Got This Thing on the Move, which I think is one of the greatest openers of any record ever. Just sets the tone for the whole thing. And it does not let down. It does not let you go. 
It is intense, hard rock, three guys power trio, amazing stuff. I love this record and it's not expensive. The German pressings are a little bit more, but a US pressing is 15, 20 bucks. Gotta get it in your collection. Highly, highly recommend. Next is a live album. I went with another one I've talked about. Um, I mean, I don't actually have many live albums. Live albums aren't necessarily my favorite thing. Uh, kind of going along with that bootleg thing I talked about in the last video. But I went with uh, Root Down by Jimmy Smith. I will talk about this one a little bit. This is on Verve. This is a pretty rare record these days. Not like ultra rare, but it's up there in price a little bit. It's outside what I'd normally spend. I got this copy for a good deal because this jacket is just messed up <laughs> pretty much. I mean, it's okay. It's got some splitting and stuff, but I've never seen another one in person. And I find just about everything in the wild. Uh, I don't know why I do that to myself. I guess I just like to make it harder. But um, really funky, psych somewhat psychedelic too on this record. Really young band backing him. I love Jimmy Smith's. And he's playing real funky, dirty organ on this record. Very different from anything else he's ever done, in my opinion. Um, amazing. It's just a great record. I was super stoked when I um, when I first got that one. I walked in the store, looked in the wall, I was like, because oh! it was like one of my grails at the time. Number nine is an album from a different continent. Now, this performer is not from a different continent. They are from the United States and North America. But this pressing is from a different continent. This is Lady Soul by Aretha Franklin. And this is a UK pressing, actually. Um, I found this just randomly one day. I had been looking for the album. And this popped up. So I thought I'd get it. And for me, what's very noteworthy, I mean, you've got Chain of Fools, another great opener. But um, Good To Me As I Am To You features Eric Clapton on this record. Really great little licks in there mixed in with Aretha's amazing voice. Most out of my comfort zone for number 10. I don't really buy outside my comfort zone. Uh, I'm picky. I like what I like, typically. This one I saw on videos from Noble Records and some other people, and I found out about it. And this is Toad, um, their self-titled album. This is just a European bootleg from like the 80s. Um, the reason I think it's outside of my comfort zone is I am not a huge prog person. I like hard rock and prog mixed, so that's why I was a little iffy buying this, but I knew I kind of couldn't leave it behind. So I bought it. I had listened to part of it. Turns out I loved the whole thing. Great record. Um, it gets spun. A good amount here. Let's see, number 11, Punk and New Wave, something along those genres. I don't have any albums that you would consider punk. I like some punk, um, and I'm not really a huge New Wave guy, but I do have something that might be cheating a little bit. I don't know. It's a 45 of Burning Down the House by the Talking Heads. Classic song. Love it. When I saw this, I knew I had to have it, because whenever we have people over, I usually put this on, because everybody loves this song. So, that is number 11. Number 12, a jazz album. This is one I have not talked about on here before. It's not particularly rare. This is actually a second pressing anyways, but this is The Black Cat by Gene Ammons. Amazing record. I love this record. This is on Green Prestige. It's originally on the Purple Prestige. That's the first pressing. Um, I absolutely love this record. I think it's amazing. It's got my boy Idris on it. I love anything that Idris does. But your whole lineup is Gene Ammons on tenor, George Freeman on guitar, Harold Mayburn, Maburn, I don't know, uh, on piano and on electric piano on the songs Long Long Time and Something, which is a cover of the Beatles song, Ron Carter on bass and Idris on drums. I love Idris. I love Gene Ammons on this record. It's funky. It's uh, considered, you know, Gene Ammons is considered one of the guys who kind of helped bring um, acid jazz along, even though I'm sure at the time he was like, I wouldn't call it that. But they call him the Jug. 
which, oh, uh, Jug Guys, first song on side two, phenomenal song. Highly recommend that record. Number 13 is a soundtrack. Again, not a big soundtrack guy, but I do like a certain genre of soundtracks. Don't have many of them because I don't find them that often. I picked Superfly. Uh, Black Exploitation soundtracks, I love. I love funky, psychedelic sounding, just dirty funk like that. Classic song. Love this record. It's amazing. If you don't have it, get it. It's on the Curtom label. Number 14, uh, an album with no writing on the jacket. This is something we probably all have. I went with Led Zeppelin 4. It does have the sticker. I don't consider that writing. If I were to take it off, it would have no writing. But this is like a 19, I think, 81 George Piro's cut. With the other sticker on the back. And the shrink. Could have worked for that too, but it sounds awesome. Really happy with this copy. I love having this sticker, even though it's not, you know, one of the original later stickers. That's fine with me. Number 15 is a colored vinyl. Again, I only have like two that are on colored vinyl. It's not really something that calls out to me that much. It's one I showed in my last video. Chulahoma by the Black Keys. I go in more in depth in this in my last video. Uh, if you want to find out more about this record, I would recommend checking it out. Let's see, number 16, my pride dig of the year of 2021. Uh, I have not shown this one, actually. I have a few that I'm very proud of that I picked out of the wild, but this one, I'll be honest, it's because it's rare and worth a lot. But it's also good music, so I think that's okay. This is called Natural High One by Natural High. This is on that Chimneyville record, and it's also a promo. Um, this is a late 70s funk and disco record. Really good. I didn't really know it when I picked it up. I knew what it was. I had heard a little bit. I just also knew it was rare and worth a lot, and I got it for like 30 bucks. So, of course, <laughs> uh... You know, sometimes I like having, you know, rare stuff around and stuff that you just don't normally find. And I actually ended up loving this record. So I'm very happy and very prideful of this record. Number 17 is a record from a band from the past that I bypassed until this year. Uh, this one is pretty clear cut for me. This is Obscured by Clouds by Pink Floyd on Harvest. I love Pink Floyd. Great amazing band. I had never heard this until this year, actually. Um, and I listened to it. Obviously, you know, it's not quite the cohesion of their later stuff, but I love this record so, so much. This is another one I got obsessed with this year because it's amazing. It might not be that long, drawn-out, you know, atmospheric music, but it's still some great playing and songwriting on this album. Um... Mud Men is ama an amazing instrumental. Childhood's End. I wish that those two were actually back to back on this record because they're my favorites. And one is at the end of side one, Mud Men, and then side two starts with Childhood's End. And if they were back to back, I don't, I'd go crazy for it even more than I already do. Anyways, moving on. Number 18 is a box set. Uh, I picked this one up for really cheap. The box is pretty beat. But this is Shut Up and Play Your Guitar by Frank Zappa. I'll open it up for you guys. It is on this Barking Pumpkin label. Now, the box is beat, but each of these records is like VG++, like excellent grading. Uh, had all the original inner sleeves. They all, all three look like this. Blue with some writing on the back. And then it also had... Which I thought was really cool. It has a little mail-in Zappa guitar book. Like, promo flyer. Thought that was awesome. $10 for this. And, I mean, it's, again, not one of, like, the rarest things out there. But it's definitely not something you see every day. And I was very, very happy. Because it's also an amazing box set full of Zappa guitar solos. And Zappa is someone I love hearing guitar solos from. I think his guitar playing is amazing. I know a lot of people think it sounds sloppy, and I think that is a per like a choice by Frank. Because, you know, I mean, 
I feel like Frank did nothing, took nothing serious, and I love that about him. I think it makes him amazing. He played rock and also made fun of it. What a concept. Number 19, uh, my best or favorite cover art of the year. I love cover art. I love typography. I was about to pick um, Let's Get It On by Marvin because that's my favorite typography on a record. I absolutely love that typography. I wish I could use it all the time. But I went with something that does have amazing artwork and not everybody thinks so. I think it's amazing. And I went with Zuma by Neil Young. This is a really clean original. Um, I mean, for a white cover, I couldn't ask for a, anything cleaner. It's got like a little bit of, you know, warpage right there, but whatever. Also has original inner, which I also love the artwork on. I love these drawings. I think they're so cool. I don't think they're meant to be anything amazing. Uh, also had the lyric sheet. It goes really well with the artwork. And the same type of, you know, handwriting style. And I love this record. Obviously it has, you know, Cortez the Killer. But I think my favorite song is the very last song on this album, Through My Sails. I think it's a really great, um, gentle song by Neil. And he does those really well, but it's just not something we're really accustomed to hearing from him. And I think that is a great little love song. And number 20, the last one. I tried to make this one a little bit shorter. I'm sorry if it's still long. It was a present or VCL, VCLT for the year. I don't think I've been wrong enough. Excuse me. I don't think I've been around long enough in the VC to, you know, really receive any VCLT. Not that I expect to. It'd be cool. I would have, I would be happy to pass that on if it ever happened. But anyways, not the point. This one was a present that I showed in my last video, and that was A Love Supreme live in Seattle, John Coltrane. Amazing, amazing performance of this record. Very different from the studio version. And I live outside Seattle. Had to have it. There you go. That's my first vinyl tag ever. And hope you guys made it through this far and hope you enjoyed some of my selections. Uh, I know I've shown some of them in other videos. I'm sorry. But right now I'm not really in the market to be buying a bunch of vinyl. Hopefully again soon. And I hope I can show you guys some new finds that I find. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.